You're listening to 2SER 107.3. Now, coming up this week, Thursday, 18th of August, at the National Art School Cell Block Theatre, you could be treated to a very special performance by one Mark Temple, who joins us now via the power of the internet. Mark, first of all, welcome to Tuesday Drive. It's fantastic to have you. The performance is to go along with Corona Code, an album that you've just put out, but you're also a researcher. Could you give us just a brief insight into how those worlds have overlapped for you for this album? That sounds like such an easy question, but um, I guess it's more complicated than (laughs) I care to mention. So I used to be a musician a long time ago, and then I joined science And I tried to leave music behind for like 15 years. I would not mention music within my workplace as a a molecular biologist at Western Sydney University. I I do molecular biology and I don't want to be that guy who was in a band. I kind of (laughs) want to be a molecular biologist. So about five years ago, I came across a technique called sonification where you can use audio for data analysis. And I thought maybe I could apply my what music skills I have to the process of generating the audio within a science context. So it was an attempt to sort of bring a little bit of my background into my current job. Mm. So that's why I started making audio as data analysis. And because I'm a molecular biologist, I look at DNA sequences a lot. So I thought the most obvious thing to sonify would be um, biological sequences such as DNA and RNA. Yeah, it's so So fascinating. I love the world of this kind of generative music or sonification, as you call it. And, you know, sonification is just one side of generative music. It's a whole wide world there. And the thing that really uh, fascinates me about it is that you're coming at it from this side of scientific analysis, where you're using the tools that I in the audio world would use to make sounds, to record this interview, to play it out to our audience, to do data analysis because of the way that audio is just a way of portraying information. And I suppose bringing music back into your career, how did you find reintroducing that art to what you were doing? Because there is a level of curation that goes into generative music, right? How did how did that overlap start to happen in the lead up to this album? You, you talk about the overlap between the two. I, I tend to think of it as two sides of a coin. And those two sides don't overlap because within the science world, I've got to keep my science scientific. I don't want to bring music into science because that makes no sense. So I do all the science on one side of the coin, but then once that's finished and published and everyone's gone, yes, yes, that that makes sense scientifically, I then take the audio to the other side of the coin, which is the rehearsal studio. And then we say, well, here's this strange bleeping audio. Let's put it in the room as if it's a musician and let's start playing to the strange audio. And that's what we've been doing. We've been um, taking, you know, that and composing music around the sequences that we've sonified. And sometimes we're complementary to the sequence. And sometimes we just play on the top of it and just drown it into the background for short periods of time. We're trying to make this music that can be listened to without knowing the background of the science. But if you do know the background of the science, that's really interesting as well. Yeah, I suppose one thing I found interesting looking at this album was there was a video that went up that we'll have linked up on the website of you kind of doing some initial work, putting drums over the output of the DNA sequences of the coronavirus. And then further along the line, that's now turned into a song that's on the album that you've put out. And how different those sound. There's like a kind of chaos to the initial demo that you uh, have linked in this article that isn't as present or is more effectively masked on the album how much curation goes into turning what can feel like random noise into music yeah there's 
I, I take two approaches. The, the one is I play the, the, the sonified audio, the, the bleepings, and I sort of use it almost as a click track. And I, I, and I try and find the tempo that matches the click, the, the bleep bleeping. But within the audio that I made, different bleeps, if you like, are in different timings and signatures. And as you said, it's sometimes chaotic because the sequence is sometimes syncopated and you've got no idea when the syncopation is going to happen. So you're playing in with what sounds like the on beat and then suddenly it switches and you're now playing on the off beat. which is really disconcerting as a musician. But um, I've been laying down the drum tracks and then that gives certainty to the musicians who come along to play afterwards. So that's one approach I've been taking. The other approach is to actually compose with the sonified audio. So to take little sections of it and then cut and paste them around and break them down into individual layers because the audio I make is quite layered. So I can break it down into, into individual layers and then build it up again. So you can play around with composing with the sequence data itself. But, you know, so, so that's the, the two approaches. One is composing with it and letting the sequence really dominate. And the other one is to play to it and to try and tame all of these syncopated beats. Oh, man, that's fantastic. I should say for those of you listening at home, like I'm, I'm trying to contain myself a little bit here because I'm a huge geek when it comes to generative music. So I hope that I've, I've asked questions that at least helped give an insight to what Mark and I clearly are both so fascinated by. And Mark, it's been such a treat here on Tuesday Drive getting to pick your brain on your approach to kind of generative music and sonification. Absolutely. It was fun talking to you, actually. I enjoy your enthusiasm. If you want to find out more about that gig, we will, of course, have details up on the 2SER website and all the sound ideas for Sydney that we have around the station. So go check there if you're interested in seeing that this Thursday. 